Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press. We have a quick review of the major stories making headlines across Nigeria this morning. We're starting with the Punch newspapers just before we introduce our guest. And it's going to be on your screen in uh, uh, just a few seconds. There you have it. It says here, um, Satan's fault presidency attack on grazing ban. NEF slams Buhari. It also says, uh, Land Use Act empowers governors to ban open grazing. It's straightforward. That's for Michel Chage. Herder's right of movement doesn't, over, doesn't uh, cover the right of cattle destroying farms. Oh, yet Tibo is saying, and uh, the South won't yield its land to invaders masquerading as headsmen, Governor Kiri Delu says. We can also see on the point this morning, federal government and Delta differ on 4.2 million pounds Ibori loot payment. Reps confused. ASU alleges bribe for salaries in AGF office and massive IPPIS fraud. Uh, mentally ill woman wrongfully accused of baby theft and gun possession lynched in Lagos. It's a really sad story. NDLEA plans drug tests for politicians and admission seekers. Also, um, NPO backs uh, state police, PIB, and reduction in governance costs. We can also see on the punch this morning, on top of the screen, uh, MAN says petrol price hike inevitable, demands transparency. And experts fear inflation as CBN further devalues Naira to 410 Naira to the dollar. Our next batch of vaccine supply likely in August, says NPH CDA. And um, I think we can just uh, leave it there. I think the EFCC narrows 10 billion naira fraud probe to 10 PDP items spending. Those are the stories that we will share on the punch this morning. And looking at the Nation newspaper, the headline reads, Presidency gets knocks for opposing open grazing ban. Akira Dulu here says, stands shocking, provocative. Artem Okoa, clerk, fought federal government. UK worried about Southeast insecurity. <clears throat> Delta gets 4.2 million uh, pounds Ibori linked loot. Also on the nation, petrol subsidy. Labor puts unions on strike alert. CBN devalues Naira to 410 Naira 25 Kobo to $1. NAFEX rate adopted. All must preserve Nigeria's unity, says Tinubu. Four policemen killed in attack on Enugu station. NNPC, Bunga Pact to raise $700 million cash. Banks insist states must repay loans. Air Force to audit operations. And Okonjaiwela, why Africa needs debt restructuring. Uh, those are the stories on the nation. All right. The Guardian newspaper comes up uh, next. Burden of external loans increases as CBN adopts market-led uh, forex uh, rate. Also, Delta gets 4.2 million pounds uh, Ibori loot. Cholera kills 20 in Bochi, 302 hospitalized. Next COVID-19 vaccine supply for Nigeria uncertain. Oh, NPH CDA says, and we can also see on The Guardian this morning, you are wrong. Governors and lawyers tackle presidency on open grazing. Nigeria to earn 322 billion naira. Uh, from NNPC, Bonga PSC deal. And Senate panel laments poor electricity meter distribution despite release of 33 billion naira. Violence in Southeast fueled by 2023 presidency, Ohaneza tells British High Commissioner. These are the stories on The Guardian. And lastly, on uh, the daily independent newspaper, governors here say, uh, talking on the proposed grazing reserves, we won't cede inch of southern and Benue land. Gaba Shohu, a pitiable messenger, says Akiri Jilu. FG comments fueling secession agitation, says Afeniferi. Pandev asks Buhari to retract statement. Northern elders to southern governors, you're building ethnic monsters. Gunmen raise police station in Enugu, kill four cops. Persistent drop in wholesale retail trading may halt slow recovery. Ibifa IYC president abducted amid planned protest. No bomb explosion in Eboni, but tear gas and policemen PPRO. CBN moves to unify exchange rates, adopts NAFEX rate. 
the values naira now 410 naira 25 cobo to a dollar officially retains npr at 11.5 percent and mietia la says we're not against open grazing ban in the southeast uh, those are all the stories we're taking this morning uh, good morning mr ademola akimwala publisher of the podium media good morning nice to be here again yes. thank you for having me thanks for joining thanks for us here. So there's lots of Thank stories you. we've seen on all the papers, from the exchange rate strip, a proposed labor strike because of the um, uh, possible hike in fuel price, to all the you know knocks the presidency is getting for the open grazing ban. There's just so much you know making the headlines here on on the newspapers. Where would you like to start? Uh, well, obviously, let's start from uh, the most controversial issue in Nigeria today. The, the um, spat between the presidency and uh, the southern governors. Um, it's quite uh, unfortunate, as we always say here, that the presidency has lost control. The president has lost control of the country, uh, where you have a presidential head sitting in his coast office in Abuja and challenging a decision collectively made and agreed by elected representatives of the people, then you know there's a problem. Okay. Um, the presidency on this issue is morally and constitutionally wrong. And I really do not understand where Gabashi is coming from. Okay, the laws are very clear, just like the experts have said. And for, 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 uh, for, for a presidency that knows what he's doing, you challenge this in the Supreme Court. That is where the Supreme Court is there. Rather than issue statements that suggest that impeaching did not against the South. And that is what's happening now. And it's really so unfortunate that we find ourselves in this situation. This issue has been on for quite some time. It's not been well handled. It's not been well managed. And you know, crisis doesn't start overnight. Okay? It starts from an issue, then it escalates into a conflict. Then if it's not well managed, it becomes a crisis. And I think we are really knocking on the door of a major national crisis. Okay? Mm. If um, the two uh, camps continue to hold tenacious to the position, then we 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 have some way by or right, those who have been asked yes please. Yeah, still on this uh, topic, I just wanted you know you to quickly speak yeah. on. Uh, is it that the presidency and Garba Shehu and everyone in that you know space isn't aware of you know the rights that governors have to um, you know be uh, chief security officers of their states and what the Land News Act says. Um, you know, giving them the rights yeah, to protect yeah. their people. And then, second, there's people who have said this is really not about cattle. It's mostly about land grabbing, but cattle has been used as the excuse to uh, continue to push this narrative. Yeah, the best way to answer that question is to ask again, who is advising our president? Okay. okay, on issues like this, who is advising him? Okay, so you may want to say, yes, they know <laughs> what is right, but... I want to place it on record that this is the most insensitive government we've ever had in this country. So insensitive, so stubborn, okay? A government that continuously does stuff that is against the wishes of the people cannot be seen or described as the kind of government that we want. So yes, the president is aware of what is right. Secondly, I do not agree that this is about land grabbing. It, 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 it's part of the ethnicism, it's part of ethnic politics, that this presidency has been accused of over and over again, okay? But you do not say because we are from a section of the country, you close your eyes to obvious infractions, things that have been done that are not in the interest of the people. You close your eyes to those things and you hold on to an argument that is morally and legally weak and, and, and not tenable, okay? So the presidency knows the right thing, but where people think that they have the power and this is pure executive arrogance and recklessness. I mean, there's no other name for it, okay? If the governors are taking a decision, there's an attorney general of who should advise the president, but he is not even helping matters, okay? okay? I would have expected the president to say, okay, what does the constitution say? Do we go to the Supreme Court to interpret the constitution? Because where there is a face of, where there is a dispute, that's where the Supreme <laughs> Court is there. So it is not that president doesn't know what is right. They know what is right, but they just believe that they, 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 I mean, they, they hold the executive powers and they can do whatever they want. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Yes. Um, there's a lot we can still talk about this. You know, conversations yeah. regarding 
or pushing for devolution of powers. Now, Southern governors has taken a stand, yeah. but the federal government is trying to counter that. There's a lot, right? But because of time, let's quickly yeah. move to another story on the Punch newspaper, and we've seen on other uh, papers as well. It says federal government's Delta differ on 4.2 million uh, pounds Iboru loot payments. And uh, we're seeing here that uh, uh, the minister, the uh, one of the ministers in the, in the country said, first of all, Malami said that Delta State would not get any part of the Iburi loot, even though the money was taken from Delta State, saying that Delta State government was not captured in the agreement you know, to return the money. But we're seeing here from another source that the money has been returned to Delta State, but Delta State government said the money has not been paid to them. So there's just lots of confusion here regarding the Iburi loot. You know, where should the money go to? Who should receive it? Yeah. Well, in, uh, I mean, the, the, the question we should ask ourselves is, is it so difficult to trace where this money is? The UK government has turned the money. And is it so difficult for someone to tell us exactly if the federal government is saying this money has been returned to Delta State and Delta is saying, no, we haven't seen it. It just shows how serious our leaders are. Because these are issues of plain black, white. Mm. Someone should have records. This money is not spirit. There are records or there should be records. Okay. And leave that and talk about the morality of the issue involved there. This same data state government said Ibori never stole. And for those who have said, oh, that money should not go back to the state government, that's the argument they are holding on to. So suddenly the money came in and the state government is interested in having the money. And people are already saying, if this argument is coming up less than one week after the money was stolen, are we sure this, for this loot has not been relooted? Which, 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 which is very not, I mean, it's not unlikely in Nigeria, okay? So when, when you hear stuff like this, you, 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 you feel so sad that why do we find it difficult to manage the simplest of issues, the simplest, okay? Federal government said money has been paid. Isn't there a letter? Isn't there a voucher? Isn't there a document somewhere showing it? And that, that I say is saying no. I mean, can't the federal government show us evidence that the money has been returned? So we waste too much pressure time discussing issues that shouldn't even come up for discussion at all. And it's part of the issues we have in governance. We are not transparent. There's, we are too opaque in the way we run affairs in Nigeria. And that's why all these silly arguments right. come up all the time. Yeah. Let's move to the, um, still on the punch, it says here, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria saying petrol price hike is inevitable. Um, and, of course, uh, demanding transparency. Uh, we've, uh, I think, earlier in the week spoken about 385 naira, which was mentioned as a likely, um, you know, price of petrol, you know, when uh, the government completely hands off subsidy and, um, you know, deregulates. Um, so quickly speak on that also. Um, should Nigerians be expecting to buy petrol, you know, um, as expensive as that? And is there also a positive side to it, uh, like our guest uh, earlier in the week had mentioned? Um, it wouldn't get there. And of course, when there's full deregulation, there's going to be competition in the market and there's, um, you know, petrol price can drop as low as 100 naira a litre. I think Nigerians should be prepared to even pay higher than that simply because you, you can't control what you don't produce. Okay. The headline in the punch is a bit misleading. CBN did not devalue the naira. I would rather go with the headline in the Guardian. The CBN are simply woken up to the reality of a market driven exchange rate. Okay, the strength of a nation's currency is determined by its productive capability. The more you export and hand foreign exchange, the more you reduce the pressure on your own currency. Where that is not happening, you cannot fix exchange rate. It cannot be decreed. Okay, so as exchange rate goes up, unfortunately for us, we are not processing our crude. Okay, we are processing our crude. We are bringing in. We are going to use dollars to pay for this crude. So invariably, we are going to end up paying more. In terms of saying there are benefits inherent in food regulation, yes, that is in a country where there's transparency. We are then know the, 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 the controversy surrounding subsidy. We are not transparent. And where we're not transparent, the benefit of economic deregulation will never come to us because that benefit will go into the pocket of a few people who are well positioned, the rent seekers who are always taking advantage of the economy. So I do not see any benefit coming to us. Benefit would have come to us, but why are we not taking a long-term view of fixing these refineries once and for all? In seven or eight years of this government, nothing has been done. 
except to say you want to spend $1.5 billion to repair the refineries. How much do we need to build a new refinery? So that's what I'm saying. The benefit will not be there. So quite right. frankly, we should be prepared to pay higher prices for fuel because now fuel is being imported. We're not, mm -hmm. we're not processing. Yeah. It's being imported and the exchange rate is going up. So it, it's simple economics. It's right. simple. Ohana Zendigbo yeah. is also in the news uh, saying the crisis in the uh, southeast is fueled by the 2023 presidency. Uh, Manelli and the, and the morning we spoke about these unknown gunmen um, and uh, continued attacks on uh, police institutions and INEC offices in the southeast. Um, well, Hanez, yeah. I believe, is because of the 2023 presidency. Do you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's nothing like unknown gunmen. That's, that's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a word that we coined out of frustration, out of the fact that we've lost hope, we've lost confidence in the security forces. What is the meaning of unknown gunmen? These people can be traced, okay? You, for everything that politicians do, they have election at, as the end game. So all of these crises, the instability, the kidnapping, you cannot completely rule out the battle for 2023. Okay? Politicians will always take position. They are not interested in the economy. You are not talking about state about exchange bill. We're talking about free buying. Politicians are talking about election. That is the only thing they know about. So yes, of course, I agree that this is about 2023. Create as much insecurity as possible and weaken whatever security apparatus we have. Take control, even if illegally, of the informal reins of government. And that is what we're looking at. Security has broken down in Nigeria. I said it two weeks ago that we have become our own security. Okay? You can't trust the police. You can't trust the army. You can't trust anybody. Mm. And some people are even saying that don't even talk of election if things continue like this. How will you conduct elections? We kidnap you. So the election in 2023 may be not just the most rigged, it may be the, 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 the worst election in the history of Russia in terms of people being disenfranchised. Hmm. You will not go out to vote if you are not sure that you will come back alive. Indeed. <coughs> so it's, it's, right. it's, it's, it's not that you are not there. So another story uh, quickly on the Punch newspaper says NDLA plans drug tests for politicians and admission seekers. So we see that the chairman of uh, you know the NDLA, Brigadier General Buba Mawa, retired. He's saying that politicians need to do drug tests to make sure that you know uh, our national security, governance, and you know people in that space are doing it with a clear head. Do you support this motion? It's 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 it's. Um it's just being simplistic, okay? These guys know what they are doing. They are not on drugs. It is their insatiable greed for power and influence. It's got, they, are not, they are not high on cocaine or whatever, okay? Marwas will focus more on those who are bringing the drugs in. That's why the problem is, mm. okay, Nigeria is, is, not, is, is not really a consuming nation, okay? Those who, who pay the drugs in Nigeria, they do it for the money. So I think... Politicians know what they're doing. I don't think they do what they're doing because they're high on substance abuse. No. It's all about greed. It's all about avarice. It's all about power and influence. That's all. Yeah, well, that's well, all. So I, 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 that's been simplistic, really. Well, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think uh, Marwa is ex, you know, um, expecting that politicians are acting out of uh, um, what drug use. Um, I think they're just yeah. trying to spread you know, the NDLEA's uh, wings to... Uh, capture more people, you know, but I agree with you. It's uh, simplistic and it's mm. very unnecessary. You know, having to test uh, admission seekers for drugs makes, you know, uh, I mean, zero, it, no sense. Uh, no. Um, Unless he's able to convince an empirical study that suggests that more politicians or more students are now involved in the use of narcotics. I mean, you, 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 you must be able to back your decision up with a static, I mean, with a static analysis that will convince us. Otherwise, you are going to dissipate energy, time and resources running in, in, in the wrong direction. Mm. Yeah. By the way, you know, a lot of people who are going to use drugs, you know, um, will use them in university, not before they get into university. Yes. You can't be writing jamming on drugs. So. So, anyway, okay, so, let's quickly look at this absolutely. one on the Nation newspaper. We know about the sad incident yeah. of Friday, May 21st, when, you know, that plane crash, I know, happened in Kaduna State and uh, there's lots yeah. of you know investigation going on and Air Force here is saying they're going to begin to audit the operations um, um, what do you think about this um, 
I would say it's a bit too late, okay? But still, we welcome it, all right? Uh, something must be wrong with the aircraft, okay? Something must be wrong. One, two, three, something must be wrong. And if it takes the loss of life for us to audit, it it, it, it goes to show how, how, how careless we are. We need to be proactive, okay? You don't have to wait until planes crash before you audit uh, the, 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 the airworthiness of this aircraft. Mm. It's a welcome development, but would that bring back lost souls? No, it won't. It oh, won't. But it would say. So, yes, the audit will help us to actually ascertain, okay, the airworthiness of this aircraft. And I believe that the AIB is, is also investigating, even though it says that in matters like this, its influence is limited. The military will do its things in its own way. But I sincerely pray that the AIB, which is Accident and um, Investigation Bureau, would be able to work with military authorities to get to the root of this. We need to know, was this weather? Was this pilot error? Was it that the aircraft was not good? We need to know. So yes, the audit is welcome, but it would uh, be a welcome development if we are more proactive next time. Next time, rather. All right. Um, there's also expectations, the NPH uh, CDA. Uh, says uh, the next uh, vaccines. One of the papers actually says August, and then the other paper says uh, they're not sure, you know, when the, uh, the next one will be arriving. Um, a lot of Nigerians, of course, uh, still have not been vaccinated. Actually, just a minute yeah. percentage of uh, Nigerians have been vaccinated. Um, so yeah. tell us about, you know, what it is like over there where you are. Um, how, how's vaccination going over there? And then, you know, compare that with uh, our situation here in Nigeria. Okay, okay. Yeah, in the United States, um, the country is about reaching what we call herd immunity, uh, whereby a substantial percentage of the population will have been vaccinated. Um, as of last week, I think over 80% of the adult population have gotten the full doses of their vaccination. We've always known that Nigeria will run into this shortage crisis because half in Asia didn't have enough. Okay, didn't have enough. And with all this, Nigeria, I do not know how those vaccines were allocated. I do not know if those who really need the vaccines ended up getting those vaccines. So we knew that we didn't have enough right from the one. We knew that what we had wasn't going to um, take care of our needs. 120 million people, I don't think we got up to even 15% of that. Mm. So elsewhere, there's tremendous improvement in fashion in Europe there's so much progress because they have these vaccines okay and don't forget that some Nigerians still don't believe that there is COVID-19 so that cultural resistance is also going to affect our ability to attain herd immunity a lot of people don't as of last week I spoke to some people they were telling me that there was no COVID-19 I said good luck to you okay oh. so we we we, we knew that right from the one that the, the allocation we got would not go around. Mm. But waiting till August, and this is May, June, July, August, oh. what happens with you now and then? Well, let's see how it goes. Um, I think we, you know, yeah. you know, also say that we're lucky, you know, that we also don't have the numbers that some other countries have, either because we haven't tested oh, yeah. enough, Absolutely. or because somehow so we've yeah. just been, you know, lucky with managing uh, COVID-19. Yeah. Then we're like, well, I think very, very lucky much. and the typical Nigerian um, immunity. Yeah, natural immunity. <laughs> Thank you very much for Thank your time you. this morning. Uh, thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank Have you a so great much day. For All right. Me. All right. Okay. Stay with us. Uh, Today in history, May 26th, 2020. And I'm going back to the year 2004. We'll be sharing with you some events that took place on this day. Stay with us.